In today's episode, it's going to be all about learning to embrace progress. And so my promise to you is that I'm going to help you feel more fulfilled in your work as an entrepreneur and embrace the journey without feeling behind or worried about what you're not getting done or feeling like you can't shut it off because you're not there yet. You ever felt that way? Yeah, me too. And so I feel like that's why it traps so many entrepreneurs behind their computer screen day in and day out without being able to shut it off is because they feel like they're not making enough progress forwards or they haven't reached their goals yet. And so, oof, I can feel you on that. I've been an entrepreneur now for 15 years, which is insane, like literally half my life. And eight years of that have been as a full-time entrepreneur without a nine to five. And so I've had a really good opportunity to learn how to embrace progress and to not give up or back out on this journey. And as you know, business is like this mirror that just shows you all the places in your personal development journey where you're still ultimately not free. And so it's, I feel the number one thing you need to do and need to cultivate for yourself as an entrepreneur is learning how to embrace the progress learning how to focus on those micro wins, those small wins versus seeing the gap and how far you are away from the thing that you ultimately want to be achieving. And so when we can start to embrace the progress and to see the stuff that's actually really moving forward on our journey, that's where it starts to get really exciting because you're like, oh my gosh, and this thing came through for me recently. It's like, oh my gosh, the only thing holding me back from my vision being in my reality right now is time. And so I'm going to help you feel that today. So I'm going to share with you how to not beat yourself up about what you haven't done, but to focus on what you have done and actually feel good about it and feel like it's been enough. So gosh, this is actually really timely for me because yesterday I had quite the experience uh, filming content. So this is all part of this story. Okay. Well, Usually what I do is on a Tuesday, I look to film three long form pieces of content that are going to go out for the next week. And I would have loved for that to happen. Okay. I would have loved it. But what was going on? It took me way longer than it should have to film a 30 minute video. My camera stopped. My microphone wasn't working properly. Just nothing was connecting. Uh, it was all the user error, by the way, is all of me. I didn't triple check that everything was connected properly. So it just made it an absolute nightmare in post-production. And it took me over three hours to do a single video, which is insane. It's not like me at all. And that's why I'm filming this video today on a day that I usually take completely off because we needed to catch up for that, right? But when I was sitting down in post, I actually had a client ask me today. She was like, how did you not get super frustrated? Like I would have been pulling my hair out and like crying and just super upset at the process. To be honest, it was really actually a great question because it had me think like, how do I handle those situations, uh, you know, and not go into this like negative spiral? How do I use that as momentum forward? And the way that I was able to respond to that was in that moment, I just looked at the next thing that I needed to do to get done. So for example, if it was downloading the final video and then uploading that to YouTube, I was like, cool, now do that thing. And then you're one step closer. And it's okay, now it's adding chapters to the video. Let's do that now. And each time I was done, I was like put checking off these mental check marks. And like, cool, now this next piece that I need to do is this. And it's chronological, right? It just makes sense. But what I wasn't doing was looking at all the other steps that I still had to do to get it done. Because then I would have been annoyed. So I'm like, God, it's going to take me another two hours. Like, this is insane. I want to be done with this. I was just like, in this negative like spiral yesterday because nothing was working properly. Probably should have just stepped away at that point. But I was like, I'm gonna get this out. So it's okay. Sometimes we gotta just push through. But the way that I pushed through and still like sure I was trying to go in that negative spiral, but the other part of me was like, no, it's just one more step. Just focus on that next step. And then before you know it, you're just done with all the steps and you're one step closer. Right. And you've got it released and then it's done and you can just do one of these, shut your computer and call it a day. And so that was just really timely. OK. And so the idea here is to embrace that progress. OK. So another example of this, right, is like right now I've really shifted my business model away from just only selling high ticket to now we have a free and a paid community. That's more the low ticket model. And what's really 
crazy is like, yeah, of course, I want 500 people in my paid community where I can just impact a ton of lives. They're all showing up. They pay, so they pay attention. Like, of course, that's what I want to cultivate. And that's what I know that this will become. And the free community, right? We want 10,000 members. We want 100,000 members, right? And we want to just be expanding our reach and creating unbound CEOs around the entire world, right? And I hold that vision. I hold it loosely, right? Meaning like, I know what we're creating and I'm holding on to that. But I'm also detached from the outcome of that. But I'm seeing the fact that it's happening now. Are we going zero to 500 overnight? No. Have people done that? Yes. Is that my story right now? No, it's not. Okay. But what do I see? I see that the fact of this morning, I opened my computer and we had a new enrollment. I didn't need to do sales DMs. I didn't need to get on a sales call, but they enrolled without questioning. And I just pinch myself because I'm like, that is such a beautiful reminder of what I'm doing this for. And it's working. Go to my Instagram. I see somebody comment and say, this is exactly what I needed right now. You are so inspiring to me. And I'm like, okay. And see, part of me, it was interesting, this is coming out right now as we're speaking. Part of me is like, if the big numbers aren't there, then it's not working. Like there's some part of me that like equates big numbers with success, right? Whether that be big numbers financially or big numbers in a program or big numbers, whatever, big numbers, watching your video, liking your video, you know, but the truth is, and this is something like, clearly if I'm talking about it again, it's something that I still need to work through, but just having one person say that on your post, we have to look at that as progress because it is. You have one person who's going from being a complete stranger who you never would have met before on the internet to now they're slowly starting to become a raving true fan of yours too. And so for me, it's starting to look and starting to see that and take notice, right? Like those of you who are listening to me and who are watching me right now, I would consider you someone who is becoming a true fan. You're becoming part of my community, part of my family. And I'm so wildly grateful for you. Like you have no idea because I've never wanted to give up. It's never been, it's never been in the scope of what's even possible because I just know, like I'm being guided. Like I know this is what I'm meant to do. Right. But there's been times when it's felt discouraging because I'm looking for the big numbers and they don't see them. And so that's where it can feel like that discouragedness. It's where I start to beat myself up. Like, what am I doing wrong? What am I missing? All those things start to play in my head. Have those thoughts come up in your head before too? Where you're like, I gotta be missing something. What am I doing wrong? Why am I not further? Right? All these things start to come up in your head. But the reality of it is you're not further than you are with more clients than you already have because you're not meant to be. So there's no point in focusing on what we don't have and seeing the lack of it, right? If you guys, there's a book called The Gap in the Game. It's by Benjamin Hardy. Obsessed with all Benjamin Hardy's books, by the way. And I'm just going to put this out there in the universe right now that he will come to my podcast one day. I will bring him on as a guest so y'all can meet him and learn from his expertise. But The Gap in the Game says it like this. There is a gap from where you are today to where you want to go. And if we're noticing the gap and the lack of the thing, it's going to make us miserable. But the other thing we've got to do and we've got to shift is starting to look at the game. So looking at where you are today, turning your head back around and seeing where you came from and noticing what you've gained since then. Like, this is interesting. So many stories are, I'm, I'm going to story tell it today, okay? Uh, so many stories are coming up. But Steve and I started to talk about this the other day and we were talking about, so we actually uh, were at dinner and we looked over and there's this group of 21 year old girls, you know, they had the sashes on, this like 21, ready for fun, you know, and they were wearing like their short little party dresses and didn't have a caramel. And uh, he was just starting to talk about, it. he's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, you know, I met you when you were 21. That's insane. Like, you were just a little girl. Like you've changed so much since then. And it's really given me the opportunity to connect to how much I've really changed since I was 21 years old. Like you gotta understand at that point in my life, 
I was literally waking up at like three. Well, this is for the days I wasn't working. Most of the time I was working nine to nine at a car dealership, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Multiple days per week. The other days were nine to six, nine to four. I wanted to go on a vacation. I literally couldn't go unless I went, like moved my day around, my days off, and I could only go for like two and a half days. It's insane. But outside of work, here's what my life looked like. I would wake up at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. I would wake up. I would get ready, all dolled up, you know, the whole nine, like all the things, dress in like a short skirt, uh, some sexy type of outfit, and I would go to the bar. I'd go to the bar. And what's interesting is I would go all the time, every day, every single day. And it even got so bad when I started going by myself. Okay, because I knew so many people that would be there that I would just show up with no friends because all my friends were there already. Like all the people that I had met and not seen were there. So then what would happen is I would stay up all night, wait till the bar closed, I would go home, pass out, literally not take care of myself, never drink water, wake up the next afternoon and do it all over again. Yeah, it was that bad. I remember going to work. And I would get sick in the bathroom because my body was so sick. Like, throwing up a lot. No, I was not anorexic. No, I was not trying to throw up my food. I was just sick. My body was sick. It was like dying, I think. Right? I would take Adderall. I would drink coffee. I don't remember actually ever drinking water except if it was to eliminate a headache. That's from being hungover. Literally. And now I drink at least my minimum amount of water that I'm supposed to drink every single day. And I actually haven't drank alcohol since January 1st. And it's May. And that's my choice. Outside of pregnancy, it's the only time in my life I've ever chosen to give it up. Not because I had a problem anymore. But because I just don't need it. What is that? That's progress. Am I as far as I know that I strive to be? No. I've got this vision for who I'm becoming. I know who she is. I'm not her yet. I try every day to be more like her. Uh, I'm still really far away from her. And the truth is, whenever I become her, and one day I'll wake up and I am, she will have envisioned a new avatar that she strives to be like because we're constantly growing and evolving. But the problem is if we don't see this now and we don't address it and aren't like always chasing after the next thing, we're never going to just be here in this present moment. And when we begin to wake up to the fact that there only ever is one moment and we're only ever in it right now, the past is the past that doesn't exist. The future is just some perceived vision of what we hope to create in our life, which we need to hold loosely, right? But it's not, it doesn't exist in our reality. The only thing that does is this physical moment that you're in right now. And so if we're always grasping for either, and this was another thing I brought up this week, if we're always like grasping for the future and we're trying to cling on to this thing that we want and we're forcing it to our reality and we're just so pissed and we're seeing the gap of not having it or we're always living in the past, right? And hung up on something that happened years ago. If we're always in one of those two places and we've already established that the only thing that's ever existed and ever will is the moment you're in right now, are you ever here? Are you ever here if you're always there? And I would argue, no, you're not. Are you physically here? Yes. Yes, your body here. But if you're somewhere else, then you're not here. And if you're not here, that means that we can't connect to the present and build the future, meaning you're never going to get there. Because building the thing comes from being here. Yeah. So why do we need to embrace progress? And how do we do that? Well, we need to embrace progress because the more we beat ourselves up and notice the gap from where we are to where we want to go, the more we're going to actually push it further away from us. We need to stop beating ourselves up for what we haven't done and focus on what we have done, right? Then we need to look back. So how we embrace progress is we start to look back, whether that's a day, a month, a year, a decade, and see how far you've really come. 
And I would also add another piece to this, like open your eyes and actually look at what you're creating right now and start to notice the very subtle, very micro wins. And really what I would say is it's really signs from the universe that you're on the right path. Right? Like these little things, a lot of times too, it, it comes to me when I need it, right? Some, sometimes I do feel a little discouraged. I'm like, you know what? I would, I'm just really calling in someone new who's aligned with our community to join now. <laughs> and you know what's funny? This morning, my journal, that's exactly what I, what I put. And what happened? So here's my flow. Okay, so I wake up, I do meditation, I do journaling, I do yoga. By the time I was done with yoga, I went to go do engagement with my community. Someone had signed up. So from the time that I journal, the time that I went into the community, someone had signed up. How insane is that? So it can happen so quickly. But what had I done during my journaling? I connected to my vision. I connected to who I, who I was becoming. And I connected to the action that needed to be taken. And then part of that action was bringing in a client. And it happened just like that within an hour, hour and a half. And so when we start to look at that, we start to look at what we're gaining and we start to really embrace these micro wins. Our entire world starts to shift and we start to up level in ways that we didn't see possible before. But it is possible. You just have to look at the right things in order to see it. So embrace progress. If you want to be a part of that community, I definitely hope to see you inside. I've got over $10,000 worth of courses, resources, trainings, all the things that I've been working on over the past four years as a coach are inside of these two communities. And so you're welcome to join Unbound CEOs Collective. You'll be able to find a link. You can find me over on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. There's links everywhere. Even below this video, there's going to be a link to join us inside of that community. So go ahead, click that link. I hope to see you inside. You'll get direct access to me and other Unbound CEOs who are looking to own their work and own their life. And so want to see you inside. And if this is your very first time in my world and you liked what you got here, hit that subscribe button so that we don't lose each other uh, in this internet world that we're now a part of, uh, because I hope to continue about adding value into your life. That is the season that I'm in is like, how can I just add value everywhere possible into everyone's lives and just allow my growth on the back end to just be a reflection of how many lives I've changed. So I would love if you could be a part of that and continue I'll continue showing up for you if you continue showing up here and just enjoying the content and your feedback. So appreciate your time today and I'll catch you in the next one.